Hello, everyone. Welcome to another uh, class, another session on inner wholeness. Um, well, in this uh, class, we are going to be looking at, um, uh, let me just share the screen. We're going to be looking at, um, yeah, I hope you can see it. We're going to be looking at this third chapter, which is restoring the soul, which is the basis for our um, what is the basis for our healing and deliverance you know, when it comes to restore the soul? Okay, so we, we saw that um, um, the Lord wants us well. The Lord wants us well in spirit, soul, and in our bodies. And he has uh, given us, he has provided for us the means so that we can be emotionally whole. He has, it is his will, it is his desire that we be whole, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And then uh, we looked at that scripture. We looked at 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, which talks about um, how the Lord, that uh, the desire, he prays and he says that, that may the Lord um, preserve you uh, so, your, so, so that your whole spirit, soul, and body is kept, kept blameless until the coming of our Lord um, Jesus Christ. So. Um, let me just read that scripture uh, once again. So we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Right? It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that that is God's intent. That's God's desire. Okay, And also the psalmist says in Psalm 23 and verse 3, and he says, uh, he restores my soul, he's saying the Lord restores my soul. Uh, he's talking about how the Lord, the good shepherd, leads him beside the still waters and makes him to lie down by the green in the green pastures and, and so on. And then he goes on to say that, uh, you know, he restores my soul. And that word restore, you know, it has a twofold meaning. It means to return back to God. To return to, to take back to where it where it was or where it should be, and it also means something being repaired, something being um, refreshed, or taken to that state in which it was, right? Restored, well-being and wholeness. So, so you're saying he restores, meaning that God restores my soul. So. We talk about the soul, we're talking about our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and everything. And we're saying that God is the one who restores our soul. He wants to take us back to that place. He wants to repair whatever is damaged, whether it's our emotions, whether it's our imagination. You know, whatever is damaged, God wants to uh, restore us uh, and make us whole. Okay. So this involves healing. This also involves deliverance. Okay, this restoration process um, in order to bring back uh, involves healing, which means preparing, making well, making everything whole. It involves a process of healing. You know, healing is to uh, whatever is broken, maybe needs to be put back. Whatever is lost, maybe needs to be you know put back. And whatever is hurting needs to be healed, cured. Right. So whatever is damaged. Uh, needs to be made whole. So it involves healing. And also it involves, uh, uh, it, it could also involve deliverance, which means to deliver, to set free, to make free, uh, or to to take someone from bondage to freedom, from bondage from uh, somebody who's in bondage to the demonic spirits or evil spirits, uh, the person to be set free from the bondage and uh, and uh, made free, so that is deliverance. So um, when we are looking when we are looking at um, inner wholeness, uh, when we are looking at uh, you know how how can a what is a you know how can a person been being restored and made whole? It involves healing and deliverance and journey and a, a pathway, a process into wholeness. You know, some 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 of the times times the healing happens instantaneously. Healing happens, um, you know, uh, maybe it's just an instant and it and the Lord heals. Uh, but also when it comes to something to do with our emotions, something to do with the inner wholeness, um, we see that it 
it could be a process it could be something that uh said so we journey into right and and stay on that and sustain that um healing and wholeness okay now when we look at when we look at the basis for our healing and deliverance it's important for us to uh, it's important for us to know okay what is the basis or based on what can we say that there is healing and there is deliverance based on what because it's very important for us to know that because if we know that this is based on the word of god that this is based on scripture and it based on the truth then we can stand in faith and we can be bold and confident and say that yes um i'm going to you know i'm going to pursue this um, and there's no second thoughts there's no doubt there's nothing that is no doubt that is crossing our mind so we can be bold and strong and uh, we can stand in faith so we need to know it's very important for us to know what is the basis uh, for our uh, healing and deliverance so for, we see that healing and deliverance is provided for us on the cross you know this is a this is a big one right this is the basis for our healing and deliverance what was provided for each one of us on the cross right so um so the finished work what we refer to as the work that was finished the work of healing the work of deliverance that the lord jesus completed on the cross you know if we if we if we recall we know that the lord jesus on the cross he declared it is finished right meaning it is done it is completed so that cry was a cry of victory when he said it is finished that cry was a cry uh, which which also had a legal connotation meaning all that is required legally you know that was completed that was done it was a cry of victory it was also a cry uh, uh, when he when he declared it is finished it also meant that yes whatever is required legally whatever needs to be fulfilled has been fulfilled it is complete it is finished right um uh, when we look at isaiah 53 so we're going to look at um the basis for healing and deliverance uh, looking at the finished work of the cross and so on the cross what was done for us okay so we have done the, we've we've studied this earlier in our earlier classes but um, in our earlier subjects also um, maybe in who we are in Christ but it's it's good to go back to it and we remind ourselves of it right isaiah 53 and verses 4 and 5 uh, if you look at isaiah 53 and verse 4 um, it says was for says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed so here as i have prophesied about the about the messiah and what he is going to do on the cross he is prophesying about the lord jesus and he is saying that he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed right so which means the punishment the chastisement the punishment um he took that punishment in order to bring us peace right and by his stripes we are healed so that word peace um it goes beyond just quietness or lack of confusion or peace of mind that word used there is shalom which means deliverance goodwill healing health prosperity safety and so on so it's a power packed word which includes all of this right so the punishment for our shalom uh was upon him and by his stripes which means the punishment that he took by his the, the the blood that was shed by his stripes we are healed right by his wounds we are healed and the word heal there means rafa which means um to make whole to cure to heal and so on so we see that um not only did he take our physical sickness or symptoms but also emotionally you know whatever was required for our emotional wholeness 
the Lord Jesus carried on the cross. So when we look at the finished work on the cross, it, it means that the Lord Jesus uh, completed whatever was required for our emotional wholeness as well. He finished whatever was required for our emotional healing and wholeness. Right. So, so we see that. Second thing we see is that because of the work of the cross, the finished work of redemption on the cross, we we see that um, we see that we are something has been done for us. Uh, because of this work of the Lord on the cross, he carried our sickness, he carried our sin, he carried our cur curse upon himself on the cross. And because of that, we have actually been, we, we have been taken, we have been delivered from the powers of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness, from the bondage of darkness, and we have been released into the kingdom of light. Okay, so that's something beautiful that's something glorious um, Colossians 1 and verse 13 um, says that um, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love so we have been delivered we have been snatched we've been taken away from the powers of darkness and we have been conveyed and released into the kingdom of light kingdom of uh, the, the sun right uh, and uh, and so verse 14 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Acts 26 and verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me okay so so this is what happened that as dark as kingdom is to light our darkness is to light you know as as contrasting uh, as darkness is to light it metaphorically is talking about the kingdom of darkness and the and and what light means uh, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of jesus right so we have been delivered so which means that darkness does not have any more claim over our lives, which is, a, which, is, which is great news, which is good news. Right? Darkness has no more claim. So it's it's like how we have been, uh, you know, uh, the the citizenship of another country does not have any hold. The rules of another country, the the the, the rules there, the restrictions there, um, do not have you know have control. You know, we are bound by the rules as long as we are in that country or nation. You know, for example, if I'm driving a car in India, I need to drive it on the left side of the road. Now, that's the rule. Wherever we go, the length and breadth of the country, I need to drive it on the left side of the road. Now, if I move from India to go to the United States of America, then the rules change, right? I cannot continue to drive on the left side of the road. There'll be utter chaos, and uh, there'll be, you know, there'll be accidents because everybody is driving on the right side of the road now, right? So if I'm driving on the left side of the road, I will see, you know, the oncoming traffic. Everybody's on my lane. I cannot drive on the left side of the road. I have to drive on the right side of the road. So the rules of this nation are null and void. When it comes to driving um, on the left side of the road, when I when I move to the other nation, which is uh, the United States of America, so similarly, the we are not bound by any of the legal claims of the evil one because we have been delivered, right? So no more rape, no more right over our lives, no more oppression, no more inroads into our minds and thoughts and imaginations. We have been delivered. So the basis for healing, emotional wholeness, um, the basis for you know deliverance is the finished work on the cross by which we have been delivered from darkness and released into light. Okay. So um, if there be anything to do with the bondage, which is from generation to generation, 
you know, we're saying that, okay, uh, some so and so, you know, my great grandfather had a drinking problem. My father also had a drinking problem. Therefore, you know, it has been passed on to me. Well, all that ends because uh, we see that First um, Peter 1 and verse 18. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 says, Knowing then you were not re redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from law, your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So he's saying you were redeemed. Redeemed from, uh, redeemed with uh, incorruptible things, the seed, the word of God. And uh, we were redeemed from the aimless conduct received by tradition from your forefathers. So, you know, these things received by tradition, uh, you know, these things that you could, that was handed down from generation to generation, even through your bloodline, everything has been has ended because of the cross, because of the what Lord Jesus did for us on the cross. Okay. Now, the other thing that we see is that we have been um, released into blessing. Right. Every curse that was upon us, a curse is a negative blessing that draws us, pulls us down. Then every curse that was upon us, you now that ends because of the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus on the cross. Now He has redeemed us from the curse of not keeping the law, the curse um, that is rightfully there because of our disobedience. That have, we have been redeemed from, right? Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay. Now, if you want to get some more insight about the curse of the law, we can go to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, and um, and we can look at Deuteronomy chapter, I think it's 28, and uh, we look at, um, you know, Verses 1 to 14 talks about the blessing of keeping the, the word, the law, the commandments. And then verses 15 onwards talk about the curse. Right Now, we have been delivered from the curse. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Why? Because the Lord Jesus became a curse for us on the cross. And uh, verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham. Now, this is the reason he went to the cross. This is the reason he became a curse for our sakes. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon all of us and come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, uh, promise of the Spirit through faith. You know, that's one of the things that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus. Right. So he has uh, he has redeemed us. He has actually um, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay. Uh, what else do we see uh, because of the finished work of the cross? We see that uh, Colossians 2 verse 14 says that he has wiped out the handwriting of requirements um, that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, which means that whatever legal requirements that the law had because of our disobedience to it, because of the very nature of sin, all those, the Lord Jesus moved it out of the way. Take He took it out of the way because of his work on the cross, because he kept the law and he destroyed whatever was keeping, um, whatever was against us. Uh, the the curse, he, he removed it, he destroyed it because of his work on the cross. Okay, the finished work of Jesus on the cross also talks about Satan's defeat. Okay, the Lord conquered sin, Satan, and death on the cross. Right. Um, several verses talk about that. Colossians 2:15 in the New Testament says, you know, having disarmed the Lord Jesus, he says, you know, having disarmed, which means this is the work which is done. This is the work which is completed. Right. This is the work which is in the past, which means on the cross. Having disarmed principalities, principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Right. So he disarmed, which means he whatever power they had, it was taken away. Right. Whatever arms they had or weapons, it was taken away. So he disarmed principalities and powers. 
and he made a public spectacle of them and he triumphed over them in it right so we see in um, isaiah 53 where the where the prophet prophesies over jesus he says he shall 53 and verse 12 he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and um, he bore the sin of many and intercession made intercession for the transgressors right so he's saying that because he poured out his soul unto death he shall divide the spoil with the strong which means there is a plundering that the lord did and he gave that the spoils of that victory to others right so we see um, he's referring to us that the spoils of victory were given to us so the victory he has given to us um, the victory on the cross he has turned around and given to us okay um, so we we see that this is the basis or this is the uh, or this is the background or this is the reference point because of which we can actually say that yes emotional healing and wholeness belongs to me okay so you know it's not based on anything it's not based on any assumption but it's based on the finished work of the lord on the cross okay so it is something which is uh, which is based on truth it is something which is based on what was done what was completed on the cross therefore we can stand strong in faith and we can pray for our, for ourselves um, to be you know walking in emotional wholeness for healing and wholeness in our emotions we can minister to others as well because of this right okay so then we see um, the new creation life which happened to us because of the cross which we have received because of the cross the new creation life okay look at second corinthians 5 and verses 17 and 18. if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new now all things are of god okay so which means that um, i've become a new creation and we we learned about this that we became new creation in our spirit man and our soul, soul, mind, will, emo emotions, intellect now conforms, needs to conform to Christ likeness. Right? So, as new creations with new identity, we have every right and we have the empowerment to walk away, to walk freely, to walk away from anything and everything that enslaved us that is part of the old identity okay. uh, our old identity could would be that we are sinners slaves to sin uh, that we are dead to god alive to sin that's part of our old identity now because we have the new creation life in us and because we are new creations in christ and because all things have become new and we are new creations in our spirit now we can walk now that dominates us the new creation life dominates us so we can walk in newness of life uh, anything to do with uh, our emotions anything to do with our thought patterns anything to do with our imaginations which are which were part of the old creation or old uh, identity now we have the freedom and the ability to walk away from it right and to conform to christ likeness right so we are conform we are transformed and conformed to christ likeness so there's no more right satan has no more legal right to keep us conformed to our old identity our old nature right? we have become new in christ and um, you know um in fact, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21 says, um, I think it's it's good that we read that. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So in Christ, we are considered as the righteousness of God. Now that's a big thing, right? The righteousness of God. Uh, not righteousness of man, but righteousness of God. So in him, in Christ, 
we have become the righteousness of God in Christ, right? So our emotions, our thoughts, our passions, our desires, and everything, um, it is consecrated unto God. Because this is our new nature. So we live out of our new nature. Okay. So that's the basis again for healing and deliverance. Okay. Then the next we see that uh, we have been given authority, you know, as part of our identity because we are no longer dominated by our old nature, but sin has no domain over us. Romans 6, verse 14 talks about that. Now we have been given authority. Right? We are in the rightful place of authority. Okay, what is it that we see? Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. It says that um, in my name, the Lord Jesus says, in my name, and this is talking about those who believe. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. So saying that in my name, they will cast out demons. And how do we cast out demons? Because of the authority that the Lord has given us to cast out, right? So we've been given authority. In fact, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, and uh, it is the Lord Jesus talking to the disciples, and uh, and he says, Behold, I give you the authority, right? I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, so he's given us authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. He's also given us authority to cast out demons. Right. So we're talking about the basis for deliverance, the basis for healing and deliverance is the authority that he's given us right? to walk whole, to 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 cast down every attempt of the enemy to keep us in bondage. Uh, to keep us enslaved, to keep us in oppression. He's given us the authority. Okay. Then we also see that he has anointed us by his spirit, the anointing that breaks the yoke or all kinds of bondages, the anointing, uh, of the, uh, which is the work and power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So the work, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit um, brings healing and wholeness, and the anoint. Uh, anointing removes burdens and yokes. Um, so this is this is something that we see in uh, again we see in Isaiah chapter ten. Um, it it talks about how the anointing breaks the yoke and removes the burdens. Um, Isaiah chapter ten and uh, and this is verse twenty seven. It says it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Okay. So there is the breaking of bondages, the removing of yoke and uh, heaviness and oppression because of the anointing. In fact, uh, Isaiah 61, the Lord's, uh, you know, uh, the Isaiah prophesying about the Messiah, saying, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. And we see. Uh, that uh, the Lord actually reads this when he goes to the synagogue. He reads a portion of it, and he says that today this this is fulfilled in your hearing. Okay, and uh, and we see that in um, in the book of Luke and chapter four, where the Lord says that he opens it, opens the book of uh, the prophet Isaiah. The scroll is given to him, and he's reading it, and he's saying, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me, right, to preach good tidings." And he says, "He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to preach the gospel to the poor, and so on, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and so on." Right. So we see that. Well, this is something that is again uh, possible because of the anointing or the presence and power of the. Of the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? Uh, so again, because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I can boldly say that yes, this healing and wholeness in my mind and emotions is made possible, and it is God's desire. Right? That is why He has anointed to to uh, uh, you know to um, heal the broken hearted. Right? Okay. Then we see the Word of God. The engrafted word, okay, the word of God, 
as intrinsic power and ability to save or you know again the word used there is sozo which means to heal preserve protect deliver right um, and uh, do well or you know be whole to make whole now the word of god is able when we receive the engrafted or the implanted word it is able to save our souls right if, so when we receive the implanted word it is able to make us whole and save us and bring sozo into our lives you know it is able to sozo our souls so sozo is uh, an, a parallel word in greek just like shalom so it talks about salvation right save protect deliver heal preserve and so on right so, so able to sozo our souls um to what so all this is the basis for our healing so what should we do okay what should we do what is our responsibility okay the main thing is that we cancel all association all um you know agreements right in other words we're saying we cancel all the ties, all the bridges that we had built, all the agreements that we had made with the enemy, and we cancel all that, and we close all the entry points, or we close all the open doors, right? So uh, Ephesians 4 talks about how we can give place to the devil, right? We ourselves, we actually have the ability, or we sometimes in our choices, in our decisions, we give place to the devil. Okay. And Ephesians 4.27 is about, you know, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Right. Ephesians 4 talks about that. You know, to be simmering with rage or anger. Right. Don't let the sun go down uh, on your wrath. You know, don't let it be there. And it says, nor give the devil a foothold. You know, that place, uh, the word place, Greek word, it means a foothold for the devil. So a foothold is to, you know, why is there a foothold so that you can actually entrench, one can entrench yourself, one can carry, one can use it to their advantage. That foothold is given to use it to their advantage, maybe to climb up, maybe to go, uh, you know, we want to have access to, and so on. So since you now give the devil a foothold, access point, or a convenient place to take advantage of, right? Um, so we are God's property. Yes, the Lord has uh, is um, uh, you know he's he's actually the the owner of our property. He, he owns us. We belong to him, spirit, soul, and body. But he is. We are the tenants. You know, he is the landlord. We are the tenants. So as a tenant. Uh, the law, landlord has actually given us the authorities has given us okay you know this the law you know you you stay here you live here you have you have permission but as a tenant i could make some choices i could make some decisions to open the doors to open the windows and uh, you know and whether knowingly or unknowingly and let someone in and so because of my actions because of my choices i could let the enemy come in step in and uh, take authority right so um so 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 that is something you know i need to make sure that these entry points and these associations these agreements with the enemy are in fact uh, broken down okay um in our next session we talk about in you know, chapter four we talk about i mean um that, that section four we talk about receiving healing receiving deliverance and uh, how do we go about it and also the pathway um so uh, that is for the next class so with this we come to the end of this session uh, and uh, i hope we we can practically implement these right it's it's good that we are learning these truths but we put it to practice intentionally put it to practice i say you know um, you know this is the truth and this is what i choose to stay with Right. Um, so we looked at. Um, so today we looked at the basis for healing and and deliverance. So thank you for joining this session. Um, 
uh, we hope it uh, it was a blessing so we will end this and we'll continue in the next uh, video god bless thank you